strong and resilient societies. Secretary General of the United Nations said this as the world marks 2021 World Press Freedom Day. In commemorating the World Press Freedom Day, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, in a video message said, information as a public good is a call to affirm the importance of enshrining information and exploring what can be done in the production, distribution, and research of content to strengthen journalism profession. In too many countries, they run great personal risk, including new restrictions, censorship, abuse, harassment, detention, and even death, simply for doing their jobs. And the situation continues to worsen. Antonio Guterres said, both freedoms were essential for the shipping of a new global sustainable development agenda. Aims to create a safe environment for media workers across the globe because information is a public good. Steps to ensure the economic viability of the news media mechanism for ensuring transparency of internet companies as well as defend and define journalism as a vital part of information as a public good are some of the highlights of the day. Every year, World Press Freedom Day is celebrated on May 3rd to commemorate journalists and highlight the difficulties in the discharge of their duties. Some journalists who spoke with our reporter, Adebola Oshomoji, stressed the need for press freedom to germinate, which is usually challenges in the constitution of various democratic nations. Her report. World Press Freedom Day, which takes place annually on the 3rd of May, is an important occasion to celebrate the fundamental principles of press freedom around the world, to defend the media from attacks on their independence, and to pay tribute to journalists for their effort and struggle in the exercise of their profession, as explained by some journalists. Because um, they are out to educate, inform people, and entertain them. When the media is free, they can fight for the people and our democracy can be better. Across the world, we will continue to uphold the tenets of uh, journalism, which is upholding the truth, continue to be the conscience of uh, the nation, of the people. This agitation for press freedom has been going on, and we have been achieving some some results step by step. They also submitted that this year's World Press Freedom Day tagged information as a public good serves as a call to affirm the importance of cherishing information as a public good and exploring what can be done in the production, distribution and reception of content to strengthen journalism, to advance transparency and empowerment while leaving no one behind. Many of these uh, conventional media will want to like be spontaneous. But then there is this aspect that we are neglecting these days that uh, you don't verify your news. You must verify the news and balance it. We should make sure that we stand by the truth, uphold the truth, make sure that the people have a better deal. That is how we can fight the oppressors. That is how we can stand our ground and continue to march on and press for the freedom of the press. These things that we are enjoying now is because some people fought such fights in the past. If we stop now, it means those who are supposed to enjoy the dividends and the benefits that we are fighting for now would have to almost start from the scratch. We should continue to do what we know how to do best. We should continue to tell them to take the real part, the part of the masses. The role of media in the society cannot be overemphasized. Hence, government at all levels need to enhance media and information literacy capacities that enable people to recognize and value, as well as defend and demand, journalism as a vital part of information. Adebola Oshomoji, OGTV News. 
role of organized labor in democratic governance cannot be overstated as it played a leading role in returning Nigeria to democratic rule. This was the submission of Chairman, Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, Ogun State Council, and his counterpart, the Trade Union Congress, TUC, Comrade Olugu Mifajobi, while speaking with our reporter, Kola Oleosho in Abeokuta, on the significant role played by labor in democratic governance. Details of his report are presented in this package. The Nigerian labor movement comprises of a variety of unions that represent the specific interest of workers. They engage in struggling for the rights and welfare of workers, in particular for decent wages and improved working conditions of service. Where negotiations fail to achieve the desired results, labor unions are noted for industrial action. Uh, strike action, well, uh, like anybody uh, uh, or any group, is the last weapon that we have. It's not a thing that we are happy to use all the time, but when we are forced to, we have no option than, than to use it. Uh, we just hope that uh, we will not be pushed to such extreme all the time. If we employ social dialogue, you know, some of these things can be resolved. But uh, when they are not willing to talk with you, you will write to them, they will not respond, so you are forced to. So it's not a thing we enjoy because it comes with a lot of uh, implications. So we think with better interactions and relationship, some of these strike actions can be avoided. Uh, so there are several ways um, by which they go about it. Of course, we, we have the mediation, the arbitration, we have the soft ways of going about it. But under the labor heart, they are also allowed to embark on strike when their views are not being heard or being attended to or being given the required consideration. During the struggle for emancipation from the military rule, Organized labor played a major role in returning the country to democratic governance, according to the labor leaders. Labor with a civil society will play a leading role in uh, returning this country back to democracy, you know, from the military rule. So it's a very, uh, just that along the line, you know, because of some regulation, misconception, lack of knowledge, we thought that uh, uh, public servants cannot take part in politics. But, you know, we've since known by... Uh, the Court of Appeal judgment that there's a role we can play, we can even play some active role uh, in the politics. It is partisan aspect that we cannot play, but we can still take part in the political process. If in a proper democracy, the labor stands first and foremost to defend the rights of its members and also to set agenda for government for good governance, it, it stands at a uh, uh, as an element for correction, for guidance, for proper tailoring of government policies to address issues and situations as may, may unfold within that democratic setting. They said the operation of labor movement in terms of the role played in enhancing good governance are multivariant. The role of labor my seems enormous, but it is simply to ensure that good governance is entrenched in a democracy. Labor leaders are of the opinion that there should be a symbiotic relationship between organized labor and the government for good democratic governance in the country. The importance of youth participation in the development of a nation cannot be overemphasized as it makes the country progress and ensures social reforms in the country. In this special report, Ayodeji Olawumi takes a look at how youth development can be beneficial to a nation. Youth development is a process that prepares the youth to meet the challenges of adolescence, adulthood, and achieving full potential. While speaking with some Nigerians, it was revealed that the benefits of youth development of a nation is essential as it plays great role in nation building. Any nation that would develop would have to think in line of the young generation. By United Nations definition, the youth is the strength and the force of any nation. Average between the year of 18 and 40. For every nation to, to actually survive, the youth constituency must be strengthened because 
they are the ones that will metamorphose to where the current leaders are. Youth development can be achieved through LD youth advancement programs and activities in schools and communities. You have to make sure that you build them in terms of the leadership, in terms of uh, entrepreneurship, in terms of uh, uh, manpower, in terms of different exposures. The youth are very, very important. It's very important in the society now it is because of the trend, what is going on in the society now. How do we develop them socially, economically, technologically, and psychologically? Nigeria as a nation has not done fairly well in treating the youth. One, creating an environment that is enabling for them to thrive, excel, and make things work. Two, the political class have perpetually subjugated the young element to poverty and penury. Three, the education has become bastardized. Four, the culture of wealth display has killed the morale of young Nigerians. Respondents, however, charge private sectors at various levels to collaborate with governments in engaging the youths in policy making and also create an enabling environment for youth to participate in nation building through youth leadership. That special report on youth development and its importance to the nation was packaged by Ayodeji Uluwumi. The National Youth Service Corps, NYC, has officially started administering COVID-19 vaccine to core members across the country. In an announcement on Monday, the NYC Director General, Brigadier General Shuaibu Ibrahim, stated that the administration of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is currently ongoing at the NYC Secretariat nationwide. During the pre-orientation briefing to the Batch A Stream 1 core members, the NYC had asked them to register for the COVID-19 tests on its portal and to present their slips to their camp for the vaccine collection. The NYC DG also announced that the members of staff will also have vaccine administered to them alongside the core members. Lailato Quadri, also known as Night of Majesty, is one of the most sacred nights in the Islamic calendar and it is in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Binga Adekoya in this report takes a look at the significance of this special night to Muslims and the holy month of Ramadan. Ramadan is a month of spiritual cleansing and purification. And it is mandatory for all Muslims to fast during the holy month in line with the teachings of Islam. One of the most significant and spiritual aspects of the holy month is a night of majesty, second night in the Islamic calendar which Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. It is also believed to be the night in which Allah shows great mercy on his creations and the night in which one's fate is decreed. Whatever you, that is, you have in your mind that you want God to do for you, those last 10 days, God will actually open the door of um, paradise to you and close the door of uh, 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 hell. Although the exact date of the night is unknown, but it is thought to occur on an odd night in the last 10 days of Ramadan. This is where I'm entering the first part. The reward for, 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 for anything good that, that happens there is, is manifold compared to the one, compared to the second, compared to the two third of the, of, of the month. Apart from Night of Majesty, Itikaf, also known as seclusion, usually takes place at the mosque during the last 10 days. <laughs> For clerics, the last 10 days of Ramadan are very important to Muslims for multiple rewards and also by giving sadaqat to the needy. And still to come on the news, federal government established its Center for Arms Control. Do join us for these and many more shortly.
nice to have you back. You're watching the comprehensive news package on OGTV. The security meeting held last Friday and presided over by President Muhammad Dubuari with all the security heads in attendance will reconvene on Tuesday this week, a presidency source privy to the meeting has said. President Buhari, Vice President Yemi Oshibaju, service chiefs and other security heads met on Friday at the First Ladies Conference Room, Presidential Villa Abuja. The meeting came on the heels of escalating security crises in different parts of the country and calls for many stakeholders for urgent action from the president. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the establishment of the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons, NCCSALW, to domiciled in the office of the National Security Advisor, ONSA. The head, Strategic Communication, ONSA, Mr. Zakari Usman, disclosed this in a statement on Monday in Abuja. Usman said the NCCSALW had replaced the defunct Presidential Committee on SALW and will serve as institutional mechanism for policy guidance, research, and monitoring of all aspects of SALW in Nigeria. He said the decision was part of ongoing restructuring of Nigeria's security architecture to address emerging threats and strengthen regional mechanism for the control, prevention, and regulation of SALW. According to him, the impact of the proliferation of SELW across national borders in Africa and the Sahel region has resulted in terrorism, human trafficking, organized crime, and insurrections in West Africa and Nigeria. Husman also disclosed that Buhari had appointed retired Major General A.M. Diko as pioneer coordinator of the center. The ECOWAS Commission has issued a security alert on alleged plans by criminal elements to infiltrate state capitals, including the federal capital territory Abuja, to carry out abductions or recruit for terrorism. It therefore advised its staff to limit social engagements as much as possible and avoid going out at nights, drinking places, and restaurants after work hours. The security alert dated April 29, 2021 was issued by the ECOWAS Commissioner for General Administration and Conference. This is coming a few days after the Security Department of the Central Bank of Nigeria issued a similar advisory to its staff. The alert was sequel to rising incidences of violent crimes, including abductions, killings, and banditry in parts of the country. The Bauchi state government has raised an alarm over the influx of suspected Boko Haram fighters in four local government areas of the state that share a border with Jindam, Yobe State, which was recently attacked and taken over by the insurgents. The secretary to the Bauchi state government, Sabiu Baba, made this known at a press conference after an emergency security council meeting held at the government house Bauchi and presided over by Governor Bala Mohammed. He said that the suspected terrorists who had infiltrated Zaki, Dambam, Darazu, and Gamawa local government areas have launched an attack on communication masts belonging to mobile telecommunication networks and cut away some of the properties. Two armed robbery suspects were on Sunday, 2nd May 2021, arrested by men of the Ogun State Police Command at Olambe area of Akute in Ifo local government area of the state. The two suspects, Lukman Olarewaju and Shola Alabi, were arrested following a distress call received by the DPO Ajua Divisional Headquarters, SP Andrew Akinshe, that a three-man armed robbery gang were operating at Olambe area and that they had shot one commercial motorcyclist who was later identified as Anas Husman and snatched his motorcycle. Upon the distress call, the DPO led his men to the scene and with the collaboration of the Safe, so Safe Corps, two amongst the robbers were subsequently arrested. Recovered from them are one cut to size locally made gun, two live cartridges and a snatched motorcycle. 
The victim was quickly taken to the hospital for treatment while efforts is on top gear to apprehend the remaining member of the gang. The Commissioner of Police, Edward Aulo Wajogu, has ordered the immediate transfer of the suspect to the State Criminal Investigation and Intelligence Department for district investigation and diligent prosecution. The Senior Staff Association of Nigeria Universities, SANU, has said it was under pressure to resume its suspended strike following the failure of the federal government to fulfill its promises by the end of April this year. The union said that the government had not commenced payment of consequential adjustments for the new national minimum wage and the allowances encapsulated in the earned allowance. The SANU president, Mohammed Ibrahim, who said this in an interview with journalists in Abuja over the weekend, noted that three issues are still astounding out of the seven points the government promised to address before 30th April. The SANU leader acknowledged that the issues of the visitation panel to the universities and discrepancies in salaries were being addressed by but lamented that nothing had been done on the financial issue that affected the workers directly. The Ogo State branch of the National Freight Haulers Association has been inaugurated with an assurance of more internally generated revenue through proper monitoring and coordination of all its activities. The state chairman of the association, Otumba Temitayo Adebanjo, gave the assurance in his acceptance speech at the inauguration ceremony held in Shagamu. Lisbeth Esso reports. <laughs> Installation of Otumba Temitayo Adebanjo as the chairman of the state branch of the National Freight Oilers Association. Why inaugurating the Ogun state branch of the association? Members were advised to shun all forms of disorderliness, but be focused at ensuring productivity and profitable synergy between the association and the state government. Representatives of the national body will grace the occasion speak on the activities of the association and their expectations from the Ogun State Government. Our major responsibilities are to ensure that, that goose gets to the destination where it's supposed to be without inch of problems. Either by land, sea, or air, additional train. I urge the chairman to put a memo to the state government of, uh, of Ogun State to support him to train 1,000 cadets. That is in our own constitution and what we have agreed with the Federal Minister of Trans Transport. Newly inaugurated chairman of NFHA, Otsumba Temitayo Adebanjo, Read how these objectives and goals for the association and Ogun State. One, Ogun State, we expect increase in the allocation in the IGR. Two, there's going to be an opportunity for employment in Ogun State. National Fred Oil Association established to ensure safety in the Fred Oil business, as promised to continue to provide viable and quality services for the development of Fred Oil transportation. Elizabeth Esson, OGTV News. Special Marshal of the Federal Rural Safety Corps, Ugo State Command, has elected and inaugurated new set of state executives to direct the affairs of the Marshal for another four years. Marshal Ademi Solomon Olatuji Marsh, the winner, as the state coordinator with 62 votes to defeat Omori Iyawe, who had 15 votes. Bunui Adigun covered the election and inauguration ceremony at the sector office Ibarra Housing Estate, Abeokuta. Special marshals are the volunteer arm of the Federal Road Safety Corps. This volunteer arm was created by the same FRC statute, section 10, subsection 1. The corps, which are consist of such members of uniform and non-uniform members as may be determined 
from time to time by the Commission. FRSC Establishment Act 2007 said there must be men and women of means with proven integrity in society and able to influence their immediate environment, workplace or community in favor of the cause of road safety. These are the set, set of people who gathered in this hall under the watchful eyes of the state sector commander of the FRC, Ahmed Omar, to elect new officers that will direct the affairs of the Mashar for another four years. Now to the business of the day, which is the election, and there is no small election, as every contestant wants to win. In all, three positions were keenly contested for. The state coordinator had Adini Solomon Olatunji defeating Omoru Yawe. Assistant Secretary had Okwale Temitokwe Elizabeth defeating Odunewu Temitayo. Olabi Temitayo defeating Olati Lu Samuel and Larry Yakub to emerge as the proof. Please to thank God for making today reality and for putting me there. Having said this, I can tell you I feel very good. Others came in unopposed. Taiwo Balugu, Deputy Coordinator, Oni as State Secretary, Emmanuel Dari Taiwo as Financial Secretary, Treasurer Ogushaki Yomi, Oshunla Jacob Olubenga, Public Enlightenment Officer, Taiwo Oluyemi emerged as Auditor, while Shule Yeshola emerged as the Welfare Officer. I want to admonish those of us that, I can't say it was, but the other person have an upper edge. Please don't see it as the end of the talk. No. We are still together, all of us. We are still together. Um, I congratulate you and I welcome you into the new level of leadership. They are empowered to carry out patrol and other activities that ensure good road usage on the highways. Just like their regular counterparts, they can arrest and book traffic offenders as well as prosecute when necessary. Bumi Adigu, OGTV News. The Attorney General of the Federation AGF and Minister of Justice Abuba Kamalami has explained that the delay in the final retrieval of the 4.2 million pounds of Buri loot from the United Kingdom, UK, was as a result of some logistic challenges currently being addressed. The British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ms. Katrina Leang, announced on March 9 at a meeting with the AGF that her country was concluded plans, has concluded plans to return to Nigeria money recovered from friends and family members of the former governor of Delta State, James Ibori Lang, who said the return of the 4.2 million pounds was the first of such from the United Kingdom to Nigeria under a memorandum of understanding signed between both countries in 2016 was however silent on the actual date the money will be released. In a statement on Monday by his special assistant on media, Dr. Umar Jabril Gwandu, Balami said the federal government was working tirelessly to ensure the return of looted Nigerian assets kept outside the country's territorial boundaries. Balami assured that any moment from now, Nigeria would receive the Iburi loot, explaining sometimes when a country transfers funds it may take a little more time than expected due to some documentations. And on the business news segment, Brent price slides as petrol landing cost hits 199 Naira 9 Kobo per liter. Do join us for details of this shortly. <laughs> 